So, I don't know if you guys have really ever thought about fear of God, what that really means, the fear of God. And if you know God, and you know who He really is deep down inside, you'll understand what that fear really represents. So, God allowed me, from kindness, to let me see what He wanted me to see. And I believe that He directed my life for everything that is is coming today and as maybe this won't go anywhere maybe it will but as you get to understand who I am you're gonna understand that there's there's more to this than even I know and uh, trust me when you want to talk about getting blindsided by something <laughs> and that's just it you know we're all taught by somebody Nobody really knows other than what someone has passed on to them by telling. There's never proof of anything else other than that. But we do live in a world that is mysterious. I'll just leave it at that. And mystical, to be honest with you, when you look at the world and you see the beauty of the ocean, the dolphins, <laughs> you know, catching a, a bluefin tuna. You know, all of that has so much meaning with you and God. That's that's your time with God and your glory with Him. If you think about it, when God created things, and they were for His Son, through His Son, and Jesus loved mankind so much, He was willing to offer His, his life for mankind. He really was. One of the things that Satan, I guess, didn't take into account was the resurrection possibility. Because Satan challenged God, thinking he had a sure win in the door. And that there was no way any backdoor clause or anything could get him to relinquish control over, over the world. Because that's what he wanted. And when you, when you think about that, so what has wealth and fame and fortune brought the world? Are we any day closer to peace? Are we any day closer for people not to starve? And that one really bothers me because food is grown freely by God. All you got to do is plant it and take care of it, and God takes care of the rest. And if you think that there is no such thing as a God or anything, well, I would ask that you try to plant a seed from you without, without any help from God. You come up with the seed and you plant it. And you'll know that uh, people can't even produce a single blade of grass. So when you think about that, and you think about everything in the war world and the universe, and how it's laid before us, really, what does mankind know? We're just, we're just scratching the surface of time, if that's what you want to believe into the Darwin theory. And trust me, I believe halfway into the Darwin theory, you're going to get your Darwin award soon enough. But so I'm here to teach you guys how to look through their history and to show you guys the deception that is played right before your eyes. So you guys are going to have to do your homework on this. But I'm telling you, when you understand what I've shown you, you'll come to the realization the United States is way older than they have told us. And when you come to that term, you're going to have a rude awakening because you're going to realize how long have we really been here? How many great resets have we had? So when you think of that, how many great resets have we had? How long have we been here? And you guys have to understand, you know, they told you to follow the pen to look back in your history to see how power came into the United States and how it was changed and corrupted. And if you watch this, this is very good. This will teach you about your flag and your postmasters. The postmaster is very important. At one time it held a position, if we'll go, the postmaster created the 1792 with the passage of the Postal Service Act. I mean, does that not sound familiar an act? They already <laughs> weren't even in power that long and they already put an axe out. So we can go through most of this stuff, but I'm trying to get you guys to see the root of it all. So that way, anything that branches from this, yes, it's, it's there, but until you understand the root of everything and how you've been deceived by time and by your ruling powers, and that would be every president that you've ever believed in, and I'm laying it out for Trump. If he's on my side, then I will gladly support him. If he's not, and he's an enemy of my country, then I will continue that fight.
But the thing is, is I was a witness of God. Not that I've claimed anything different. I'm still a witness of God. But I don't belong to any organized religion. But I want to tell you, God put me through an organized religion so I would learn him. Otherwise, otherwise I would have never really picked up the Bible. Because the Bible is very complex, and there's multi-meanings to very many, many scriptures. And when you understand how complex God is and what <laughs> what he's really capable of, you, you, you're you going to stand in awe, man, because of the love that he actually has for you. Trust me, I uh, <laughs> I still just want to wake up and, and don't believe that this is real, what's happened. But now that I'm here and I accepted what has been played out in front of me be, by God, because... Things are too coincidental, and when the coincidental just keeps adding up, you know that there's something more. And now I know why God chose me to be an electrician, why he chose me to travel the world to see how things are built in different places. And he had me work on two, <laughs> two interesting buildings for sure, if not more. One of these is called the Doggy Daycare. I worked on this. It was one of my first uh, jobs as an apprentice that I went to that was... Uh, like a full commercial job, which I thought would be, you know, full commercial. And uh, that was my first job. And then I worked up at <laughs> Blackhawk and the hotel. And I've gone over this in other videos and stuff. And I'm trying to help you guys see this, but you need to come together and realize that our history is a lie. And then when you go through and you understand the post, the postmaster general, he used to set with the president. He doesn't anymore. This will go into the history of telling you that. From 1829 to 1971, the Postmaster General was a member of the President's Cabinet. This one. Support given by a patron. Patronage. So you have this, this word, and mixed with our language. And this is what I mean by the spell of American spelling and English. There's reasons why this is spelled and sounded different so many different ways. Because it's easy for these. They're, they're witches. They like to cast spells. And I'll tell you by the words and way they, way they put them and phrase them. They like to feel like that's power over you and God. But you have to realize that you are God's creation. You are the center of God's creation. Now, at this point, God's been pretty lenient on mankind. He hasn't acted. It's been a Passover and a Passover and a Passover. You know, and, and that's the thing. It had to get this bad in order for you guys to see really what you're up against. Because if you guys were told this five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you would have thought it was a sci-fi movie that this is 1984. Well, unfortunately, it, it's definitely 1984, and it's our reality. So when I was going through this, I was using their pages and everything to support my theory on this, because it's a theory. Everything's a theory. I love that. Anyway, uh, May 1st, 1880, is when Salida actually got the railroad. I kind of wrapped up this video a little longer than I wanted to, but I'm going to play a video clip for you guys, and I want you to really understand what it's like to um, build construction. I mean, Jesus was a master carpenter. Think about that. All he wanted to do was create like his father, even when he was in human form. So let me play this clip for you so you guys can really understand. Now, I've done this with the with the, the deal, and I'll leave a link in there, and you could go watch it yourself, but I don't want to get hit for, you know, plagiarism. Not plagiarism, but uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, some kind of copyright or, or something even though when it's i'm not asking for a cent what i'm asking for is my brothers and sisters of spiritual and countrymen of the world to unite to come together to realize that we're all in this together and realize the ones that actually have the money and control and power are the ones that are against us and if time and truth comes out you're going to see who is on the right side of things because from here on out it's going to be nothing but discovery. And what I mean by that, you guys are starting to gonna go crazy and start wanting to look into everything that these guys have done and hidden from you because I'm going to prove it to you in these. So when I was doing this video, um, I'll, I'll play it in the next video, I guess. 
So when I was doing this video, I collected everything I could, everything that I could. And then I linked it up. I had it in my folder where you can go through and I have the history of Salida right here. And I have the links that I went through. And uh, cause last time I tried this, this is what I tried and it didn't work out cause they changed everything. And so I kind of backed off of that till I could really figure this out. And uh, I needed God to show me direction of what I needed to do. So he showed me, so I was like, all right, we'll do it again. And so when I done this again, I spent all of this time going through, documenting everything, showing every photograph I got. So that way history is proven by their historical records, their <laughs> uh, PBS special. I like to call it the public bullshit station. So what I want you guys to understand is this is Salida when they got the railroad and when they actually got the train is huge because if you go in here into the map, Pueblo, because if the train is right, if the train is right, let's uh, back out of this. It would have came in 1870, it would have came to Denver, 1871 to Springs, and then 1872 to Pueblo. And then Canyon City supposedly got it in 75, and then Salida got it another five years later. And then that's the thing, when you go through and you read this, there was nothing but wars. Like they actually, that's all it is, is wars. The train wars, the, the it, it, it's like the whole America was fighting each other. And that's the interesting thing when you look at history, it's, it's we've been nonstop in a war. That's never stopped. That's how Satan has. He's had us going at each other's throat for whenever this started. But I could tell you at a time in our history when we worked together and we lived in harmony across the world. And I could tell you that by our architecture. And when you go through the architecture that I'm showing you, you're going to be amazed at what has been left by our relatives, our ancestors, our, <laughs> you know, the ancients is what I want to call them because it looked like we lived at a time with peace and harmony in the world. And now just go ahead and turn on your news station and see what you get out of it. My deal is never for the glory and fame. I, I've tried to live a life of humbleness because my creator asked me to. But because he asked me to come out now and to take a stand, I told him that I would. Sometimes you really need to think about what you're asking God and what God's asking you. <laughs> There's, uh, let me tell you, God's a, God's a funny guy. Trust me, he's, uh, as you guys follow this more and more faith that you see things, you're going to start to see God's hand and unwind and show you that it's our time now for the righteous to inherit the earth and for those that wish to do wicked and harm, that their time is done. They followed their leader. They chose the life that they did. Satan's ultimate, final, <laughs> decision that God would make against him is death and those that all that follow him there is no hope for everlasting life for those but for those that are here now we'll see what God has in store for us <laughs>